hello 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 you guys welcome back to my kitchen so today i am taking my leftover honey glazed butter vegetables from my dinner last night and oh, let me open this and my leftover um chicken sloppy joes and we are going to make hamburger gravy or stuff on a shingle depending upon how you want to say it my grandpa always said stuff on a shingle well stuff on a shingle <laughs> but in my house we call it potato gravy so like i said i've when i made my chicken sloppy joes i made an extra large amount of honey glazed butter vegetables mixed vegetables carrots corns green beans peas it's a frozen mixed vegetable that i buy so that i had some for in my gravy then i have green beans sliced frozen green beans from my garden sliced frozen carrots from my garden and peppers some of them are from my garden and some of them are from the co-op and then it's just easy and simple i've got three tablespoons of butter because there's butter on um my veggies i only need three tablespoons if i didn't have leftover vegetables um i'd use four to five tablespoons of butter and then all i'm going to do since most of this well, all of this is already cooked, but since most of this is, you know, like the vegetables here and the meat are already cooked, all I'm going to do is brown the vegetables. Once all the vegetables are all brown, I'll add my sloppy joe chicken and then we'll turn it into a gravy to go on top of our potatoes. Now, you can make homemade mashed potatoes can use boxed mashed potatoes today I'm a little busy I got a bunch of stuff going on so I'm just gonna use boxed mashed potatoes not a big deal I'll show you how I spice them later when it's time for that aspect but for right now all I'm doing is putting the vegetables on the stove in a pan and I'm going to brown them and cook them up and then I'll bring you back when these are all brown and cooked up and I'm ready to add my barbecued my sloppy joe chicken and then we'll cook it all up and then I'll bring you back again to show you how I do my gravy so we're just gonna let this cook and we'll be back in a few minutes you guys okay there we go my veggies are nice and brown all gorgeously fried up so now we're gonna add the sloppy joe chicken and we're going to cook that for, it only takes about three to five minutes when you have, we're basically just heating the meat through at this point. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to let this sit for three to five minutes and get all nice and warmed up and brown. And then we will come back. I just made a mess then we'll come back and I will show you how to turn this into gravy so yep we'll be back you guys all right guys this has been getting nice and heated and browned it's been about five minutes and now we're gonna add the liquid to make it a gravy I know we're gonna make it all wet and juicy and then we're gonna turn around and thicken it up again but that's how gravy works all right now you can use liquid basically of any choice of yours um i have home canned veggie stock my home canned veggie stock is always tomato based because i use the skins and the scraps from tomatoes we love tomatoes in our house um you can use chicken stock um, you can use water with chicken bouillon in it, or you can just use plain water. The choice is all yours. So all I'm going to do is add just enough to make it a nice, 
thinner gravy. Ooh, let me add a little bit. I am really bad at measuring, guys. I just add by looks. So, there we go, you guys. Alright, and then we're going to let this cook and come up to a little bit of a heat. Again, that'll take about three to five minutes. And then I'll bring you back for the next stage, which is thickening up the gravy. I know that this already looks semi-thick, but it's a little watery for gravy. So I will show you how I thicken up the gravy and make it a nice thick gravy for stuff on a shingle, hash, potato gravy. So we'll be back, you guys. All right, there we go. You got here. Let me pull this back a little bit. Okay, there we go. Nice little gentle boil going on. And this is a little thick, but not very. If you like a thinner gravy, you can just use it the way it is if you want. In our house, we love really thick gravy. So, now, you can use cornstarch if you like, but in my house, we prefer potato starch. Now, one of the biggest and most important tricks is when you have your cup, you add the starch first. Then you add the water to the starch. And you always add just a drop of water at a time until you get it to the slightly runny stage that it's going to get to. So, I'm going to add some water and we're going to start mixing it with a fork. Just a little water. We're going to mix it. And I happen to add just the perfect right amount. I added about a tablespoon of water to about two tablespoons of starch. Remember, you always add the water to the starch and use cold water when you do your starch. Hot water will make it, I don't know, funny and lumpy. And then we start stirring the gravy as we add the starch. If you just dump in all the starch, you'll get big lumpy clumps of icky in your gravy. So you want to pour slowly and stir while you're adding your starch. Don't add it all at once. Dribble it in slowly. It'll slowly start to boil back up. And then you just add the starch until you get to the thickness that you want. There we go. Now I have leftover starch. If you just let this sit in the bottom of the cup, all of the water will evaporate and you'll have just a starch crust on the bottom. And then you can throw the starch crust away. You don't want to reuse ever. Never reuse starch for gravies. And as it comes back up to a boil, It'll thicken even more. With cornstarch, you have to let it boil even more. With potato starch, it thickens really quick. There we go. A beautiful, thick potato gravy. All right. So, I'm going to turn this off and let it cool for a couple of minutes while I start to get my potatoes ready. Like I said earlier, you can do homemade potatoes, home um, made mashed potatoes. Here, let's turn this off. You can do homemade mashed potatoes or you can do dry box mashed potatoes. I didn't have the time today. I've got so much going on. I didn't have the time to do homemade potatoes, so I'm just going to use bo boxed mashed potatoes. So, we're going to let this sit while we do the potatoes. So, I'm going to get all that set up, bring you over, and I'll show you how I do my homemade, not my homemade, my boxed mashed potatoes with herbs and spices and all that stuff. So, we'll be back. Alright, here we go you guys. Now, 
I don't make just straight powdered mashed potatoes. I always add a little something to it. If I had butter, unfortunately, I'm out of butter. I'd add the butter and then the spices and then the the water, the boiling water, and then the potatoes and mix it in. But since I don't have butter, I'm using that garlic oil, herb oil that I make. We're going to do potatoes first. So, dried mashed potatoes. And then a couple of good dollops. You know, like I said, you can do straight butter if you want, but you add the don't add the potatoes if you do the butter. You add the water and the herbs first. But since I have oil, we're going to do oil first. So, I have my potatoes and my oil. Then, we're going to add a little bit of garlic powder. Okay, a lot of garlic powder. We like garlic in my house. And living in the icky wet swampy areas that we live in with all the mosquitoes and all the flies and all that stuff we eat a lot of garlic in our house it keeps bugs away from you okay garlic a little tiny bit of pepper and we like a little spice or kick to our potatoes so i'm going to add just a drop of taco seasoning then I'm going to grab a big spoon, big old spoon in our house. And then, boiling water to make our potatoes. A little water at a time, because we like thick potatoes. Now I know all of these Mashed potato boxes have um, in ingredients lists on the side that say so much potatoes to so much water. Again, I'm not the best at measuring. I never have been one for using measuring cups other than the first couple times I'm making a recipe. Otherwise, I just like to add slowly and make it into what I think is best. Alright, that's going to be enough water and potato mixture and everything. Oh, that's hot water. So we're going to get all this mixed up. I wish we had smell vision This smells so good. The herbs and the spices and my garlic herb oil. Yum. There we go mashed potatoes now if you're using homemade mashed potatoes you can add butter and add your spices and then mash it all up and mix it all up and you'll get your homemade mashed potatoes that way the choice is all yours i had done homemade mashed potatoes today but like i said for like five times don't have the time so all right, and then we're going to just let this sit for a couple of minutes so it can floof up. Then we're going to dish everything up, and we'll be back, you guys. All right, guys. In our house, the rest of my family prefers plain potatoes with the gravy on top. I, however, was raised by a war refugee child well helped raise my grandparents helped my mom raise me and depression babies so 
I like mine real stuff on a shingle style, which is a piece of bread, a little bit of potatoes, and then gravy. So, piece of bread, a little bit of potatoes, and gravy. Now my family, like I said, likes plain potatoes, plain potatoes, and gravy. So, there we have it, you guys. Stuff on a shingle. I think my son might be coming down with a cold. I'm going to have to break out my uh, lemon ginger winter tea for him. Alright, you guys. Thanks for coming along. I hope you enjoyed my leftover makeover um, sloppy chicken sloppy joes made into potato gravy hash stuff on a shingle. So, We'll see you guys in the next one. And remember, everyone, stay positive. Bye, guys.